The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could. But when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. It must be understood that neither by word nor deed had I given Fortunato cause to doubt my good will. I continued, as was my wont, to smile in his face, and he did not perceive that my smile now was at the thought of his immolation. Come, <coughs> let us go. Whither? To your vaults. My friend, no, I will not impose upon your good nature. I perceive you have an engagement. Lucchese, I have no engagement. <coughs> Come. My friend, no, it is not the engagement, but the severe cold with which I perceive you are afflicted. The vaults are insufferably damp. They are encrusted with mold. Let us go, nevertheless. A cold is merely nothing. Amontillado, you have been imposed upon. And as for Lucchese, he cannot distinguish Sherry from Amontillado. Thus speaking, Fortunato possessed himself of my arm, putting on a mask of black silk and drawing a cloak closely about my person. I suffered him to hurry me to my palazzo. I took from their sconces two torches, and giving one to Fortunato, bowed him through several suites of rooms to the archway that led into the vaults. I passed down a long and winding staircase, requesting him to be cautious as he followed. We came at length to the foot of the descent, and stood together on the damp ground of the catacombs of the Montresors. He turned towards me, and looked into my eyes with two filmy orbs that distilled the room of intoxication. Mold? He asked at length. Mold? I replied. How long have you had that cough? <coughs> My poor friend found it impossible to reply for many minutes. The cough is a mere nothing. It will not kill me. I shall not die of a cough. True. True, I replied. Here I knocked off the neck of a bottle which I drew from a long row of its fellows that lay upon the mould. Drink, I said, presenting him the wine. He raised it to his lips with a leer. He paused and nodded to me familiarly while his bells jingled. I drink, he said, to the bed that repose around us, and I to your long life. We continued our route in search of the Amontillado. We passed through a range of low arches, descended, passed on, and descending again, arrived at a deep crypt in which the foulness of the air caused our torches rather to glow than flame. In an instant he had reached the extremity of the niche, and finding his progress arrested by the rock, stood stupidly bewildered. A moment more, and I had fettered him to the granite. I had scarcely laid the first tier of my masonry when I discovered that the intoxication of Fortunato had in a great measure worn off. The earliest indication I had of this was a low, moaning cry from the depth of the recess. It was not the cry of a drunken man. There was then a long and obstinate silence. I laid the second tier, and the third, and the fourth, and then I heard the furious vibrations of the chain. It was now midnight, and my task was drawing to a close. I had completed the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth tier. I had finished a portion of the last and the eleventh. There remained but a single stone to be fitted and plastered in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good joke indeed. <laughs> An excellent jest. <laughs> we shall have many a rich laugh about it at the Palazzo. <laughs> Over our wine. <laughs> the Amontillado, I said. <laughs> yes, yes, the Amontillado. But if is it not getting late? <clears throat> Will they not be awaiting us at the Palazzo? <clears throat> the Lady Fortunato and the rest? Let us be gone! Yes, I said. Let us be gone. <coughs> <coughs> love of God! <coughs> Montresor! Yes! For the love of God! <coughs>